For more on the economy in Russia, we are joined by John Quelch. He's the dean at the Herbert uh, Business School at the University of Miami. Welcome back, sir. Where, um, Thank you. I think the last time we spoke, correct me if I'm wrong, we talked about sanctions, we talked about Russia, and we talked how they were borderline working. Where are we now? Uh, I think uh, we're still borderline. The jury is still out. Um, there's certainly, uh, from a macro point of view, some encouraging news, uh, which your uh, correspondent identified. Uh, the inflation rate has uh, gone down uh, considerably. Uh, interest rates are down. Uh, the ruble is uh, stronger now than it has been for seven years after collapsing early on in the crisis. Uh, so. There are certain metrics that you can point to that say, look, the Russian economy, far from uh, uh, collapsing, is uh, uh, not in uh, such dire straits as was hoped for by those who were imposing the economic sanctions. Right. Are you, are at the same time, if I may, the consumer in Russia is suffering enormously uh, from constrained supplies from high import costs. And on top of that, it is the case that although Russia is able uh, to sell uh, oil to China and to India and other countries, substituting for European markets, um, it is not able to, under the sanctions, easily import critical components needed for its war machine, its uh, aviation industry, its auto industry, uh, and these are particularly uh, electronic components, chips in particular, that is very di it's very difficult for uh, the Russian economy to import. The Chinese in particular, the, the, the manufacturers of these chips are being very careful under U.S. and allied pressure not to export uh, these critical components to uh, Russia. So there is significant problems underpinning the short-term uh, rebound from the worst days of uh, the early part of the war. Okay, F fair enough. I, I just want to make one <clears throat> addendum to what you said there, is that the oil that Russia is exporting to certain countries is being sold at a discount, uh, not at the market rate. That, that said, correct. for the international audience that we're not economic experts by any means, but it's, I find it hard to believe that with all the sanctions and all the negative press and uh, from the West versus Russia, that it ultimately it seems to be hurting consumers, as you said, and less about the country. Because if you look at the currency situation, things are seemingly almost normal, I, I understand with the exception of the consumer. So what should the world do? Uh, well, let, let me just make two comments. First of all, um, the ruble exchange rate uh, fell to 150 to the US dollar in the early days of the conflict. It has now rebounded to a seven-year high of 52 to the dollar. However, uh, the ruble is not uh, a liquid currency. It is not freely exchangeable, and so it's subject to uh, very tight controls by the Russian government. And so we should perhaps take that uh, number uh, with a little bit of a grain of salt. Um, in terms of the uh, sanctions going forward, uh, you know, one school of thought is saying the sanctions are working and we should double down and impose even stricter sanctions. Uh, another school of thought says uh, the Russian uh, government and uh, uh, Russian business has shown it's able to work around these sanctions, and so they're not actually working effectively, and they certainly haven't uh, uh, so far collapsed uh, the Russian economy as was, I think, hoped for early on. John, very, very quickly, um, this is obviously very controversial, but we talked about the oil. We talked about um, what's happening in Europe. There was the threat that perhaps Russia would cut off Europe, but it's that oil pipeline, essentially, that's helping fund the economy. That's ultimately, I, I suppose, helping the ruble remain as strong as it, as it is at this point. Is there something that Europe should or shouldn't do here? 
Well, we've been saying and we continue to say that it's extremely difficult for the Europeans to go, go cold turkey and discontinue overnight imports of Russian oil uh, or uh, natural gas. Um, what the Europeans have done is they've punted the ball uh, so that by the end of the year, 90% of the oil imported from Russia should no longer be coming into Europe. Uh, now, they're hoping that there's going to be a settlement between now and the end of the year so that their supplies are not uh, cut off, uh, so that they don't actually have to follow through on this uh, promise that they've made. Uh, and so it's going to be very interesting to see whether or not uh, there's a, a separation in the alignment of the European nations versus the United States which is not dependent on Russian oil or gas in any way, and which is strategically benefited by Putin being pinned down on a continuing basis right. uh, in uh, Europe. Uh, I, I beg your pardon, in the Ukraine. So the Europeans and the Americans may gradually have diverging strategic interests with respect to the uh, longevity of the conflict.